so these are the basic access instruments basic first thing that you need to have is a needle now this is an 18 gauge autoclavable needle that we can reuse it multiple times now this is a 20 centimeter long needle which has a slit over here which demarcates the bevel there is a slit and there is 18 written over here and this is the stopper that you can use to uh, demarcate the depth where that you need to reach this is the first instrument that you need to have an 18 gauge 20 or 21 centimeter long needle uh, which is autoclavable and reusable the second thing that you need to have is a guide wire now i use a cobalt alloy guide wire that is available uh, from jayon company and the benefit of this is this does not get bent easily so it's an alloy and it is very difficult to bend it even if you bend it it gets straightened away very easily so if you have this kind of guide wire you can use it to 50, 50 to 100 cases for a single guide wire otherwise a metallic guide wire usually bends in three or four surgeries and it is very essential that your guide wire should slide very easily through your needle so if you have a guide wire and if it should be easily passable through this needle if it is getting stuck like this you should change the guide wire it should be easily passable through the needle next thing that you will need is the trocar that is that is dilator and the cannula now with this usually comes with your endoscope and it will vary depending on which brand of endoscope you use so this is from MP Medical. So this is a cannula and this is the dilator. And it this dilator, my dilator has single channel. This uh, variation is from Carl Schwarz. This has two channels. One is in the center and the set, second hole goes eccentric. So there are different kind of uh, dilators available and whichever is provided by your endoscope will be useful to them so this is the cannula and dilator from Carl Schwarz. the next thing that you need is a tapper because once you have put in your uh, dilator and the cannula over it you would need to push the cannula inside and this tapper fits right over here and you can hammer it with from over here now this is a set of facet trimmers as you can see uh, you, uh, this is used for an outside in technique wherein if you want you could dock your uh, needle at the tip of SAP or at the SAP and you could put a guide wire you can remove this after putting it at the SAP and uh, you could remove it and you can change it with a guide wire it comes out easily and you can put a guide wire from here and you can sequentially start reaming the superior articular process this is a 4mm reamer and we can sequentially increase its size the specialty about this reamers is that it is blunt at the tip you can see there is no sharp tooth at the tip so it is quite safe to use and it only cuts on the side so you can sequentially increase the size and it comes from 4 mm up to 9 mm reamers now these are used to remove the extra articular part of uh, facet joint or if you if the foramen is quite closed you can use it to open up the foramen before going in now the next thing that you need to have are very good graspers so these are my uh, graspers that I use. So this that you can see over here is an upward tilted grasper. Okay, this is very useful because when from in transferamel endoscope, since we are working at a 30 degree angle, if you are working with an up biting grasper, it gives you a very good uh, grip on the tissues and it uh, very useful. So other, there are also other graspers which are useful like this is a 2mm grasper which with a very small mouth opening. You can also have Indian made graspers that are also up biting. 
and very important is you need to have this large grasper now why is this large grasper needed because many a times you cannot access a central part of disc and this large grasper can hold that large fragment from the center of disc and it will help you remove it so this 10 millimeter tooth length grasper is very important to have in your inventory also required are these flexible graspers because many a times there are migrated fragments that you need to chase behind the pedicle it might have gone uh, up or down and these flexible instruments are very useful to catch such migrated fragments you can see that uh, it is tooth it holds the uh, migrated fragments very well and this is malleable so you can straighten it out or you can turn it according to what is needed in your case this is a flexible grasper now the next important instrument that you need to have are good annular cutters so this is an annular cutter this one is from MP Medical. This is very heavy duty annular cutter, which has a shaft which goes outside the channel. This is a U-shaped shaft with channel all going outside, uh, going from the outside of the tube. Now there are other annular cutters also. Now you always should have two or three annular cutters in your inventory because if it breaks, you will be stuck in your surgery. So always have a backup. Now, this is another kind of annular cutter. Now you must also have these flexible annular cutters to remove the central uh, annulus or the, sometimes even the herniated disc fragments can be caught with this malleable bendable annular cutters. So this part is bendable. So you can go straight or you can go curved, whatever you wish. And these are very essential instruments. The next thing that you need to have are very good curettes. So there are basically three types of curettes available. One is just forward bending. These are articulated curettes which with a cup that scoops forward like this. The articulation is like this. So it is useful to take out uh, the end plates or uh, hard collagenized annulus like this. We flex it and we pull it out. We flex it and we pull it out like this. The next kind of curette is right and left. This one is a left articulating curette. You can see the articulate uh, the the scoop is facing the left side, and it can flex like this. So it can it can flex like this, and you can use it to break the osteophytes on the left side. So to use it, you usually uh, flex it and usually then you turn it so it flexes and then turns so it useful for removing the osteophytes similarly you can have a right side curate this is the right side curate now having these three curates is very essential to do all stenosis surgeries because you will be facing a lot of osteophytes there now other thing that you need to have is hooks now i have hooks in three different sizes because this is a smaller hook articulating hook is ball tipped it is non-traumatic you can use it around the nerve roots uh, it does not cause dural tears if you are being careful and it helps us to tease out the uh, prolapsed fragments so you can have it in different sizes that one was smaller this one is a medium sized hook and I also have a large hook which I use it very often to retrieve out large uh, down migrated fragments. So I can use it to swoop, uh, sweep the floor uh, anterior to the dural sac. And having these three sizes of hook are important to dealing with stenosis and migrations. So you can see that there are, there are a lot of instruments that you need to have in endoscopy in all different sizes and you need to keep redundancy ready because you should have at least one other instrument if you if one of them breaks off so there are a lot of instruments there are much more in my bag that i have and these are the basic minimum that everyone must have to start your endoscopy practice and deal with all other cases now regarding endoscopes i store my endoscope in a box like this which can store two endoscopes over here 
so i usually have two scopes if one of them there something happens with one i have al always have a backup with one and to clean your scopes you must have this brushes with you many people don't have this br brushes so their endoscope might not be clean or they might land up with infection so i always have these kind of brushes and clean your endoscope after each and every surgery these these small brushes are for cleaning the uh, water channels so you can all you must have these instruments otherwise you'll land up in uh, infections and other troubles with disinfection so i what i do is i keep my endoscope in this and i wrap this whole box by sms paper and i eat you the entire thing so that way i don't have to worry about autoclave about temperatures and everything with the box gets uh, through the ETO treatment and it is ready to be used whenever we need it.